All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create an explosion effect like this using force fields and a point light. Very simple, kind of cheap and generic way to go about it. No volumetrics, but in a pinch, this works just fine. All right. Now, I'm going to be using Blender 4.0.1. And the first thing I'm going to do is just create a floor. I'm going to add a plane for that and this plane I'm just going to look at it from top side view and just scale it by let's say 50 just to make sure it's good and large and since the floor will be a physics object I will apply the scale control a brings up this context menu and then apply the scale because sometimes the rigid body system gets a little messed up if the scale of the rigid body objects are not applied and you can always tell whether it's applied because if this scale shows one right here, all of them show one, then the scale is applied. If it shows anything other than one, then the scale is not applied. All right, now I'm going to just kind of hide this floor right now. And we're going to build a very simple rigid body um, building. All right, I'm going to go on the front side view by pressing 1, and I'm also in orthographic view where you can press 5 on the keypad to switch in between orthographic and perspective. And right here you can see I'm in orthographic. Now I'm going to uh, make this smaller on the z-axis, scale 0.5, okay. Now I'm going to make a longer, I actually meant to just put scale z.5, but it don't matter. Um, I'm going to make this longer on the uh, x-axis, S for scale, X, and then say 5, enter. Now I'm going to go top side view and see it's basically just a rectangle. Alright, now I'm in top side view, and all these do not show 1, so I need to apply the scale, control A, apply the scale. Now I'm going to go ahead and give us some rigid body settings. I'm going to keep this set to active and I'm going to set this, I'm going to leave everything to um, whatever the default settings are. All right, now I'm going to press Shift D and then move this on the Y axis to about right here. All right, now I'm going to Shift Select so that both of them are selected and then press shift D and then enter and then press R for rotate and then Z for the Z axis and then type in 90 enter all right now I'm going to go in the front side view by pressing 1 and then I'm just going to press G for grab and then Z for the Z axis and then just move it up to about right here and you could go ahead and zoom in and try to make this touch G for grab, Z axis, and then just bring it down right here. We don't have to be very precise. We're just basically, um, you know, making an example here. So with both of these selected, press shift, and then select this one, and then select this one. So that all four of them are selected. And then uh, press shift D, Z, move it up to about right here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see I got a little bit of gap, but it doesn't matter. Just an example. And then press Shift R to repeat the last thing you did. I'm That's as big as I'm going to make it. Now I'm going to bring my floor back. So I'm going to make the floor or the plane visible. Now this is going to be obviously what the building is setting on. G for grab, Z axis, bring it down to about right there just below the floor. All right, now we need to create an explosion in here. I'm going to do that with a force field. Add and then come down here to force field. All right, the force field is right down here. It's basically in line with the plane. I want to just grab on the Z axis and then move it up to about right here. All right, now 
I want to make this force field the center of origin for the scene. So I'm going to press Shift S and then cursor to selection. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to put a point light right in this center of this um, force field. So I'm going to come up here to add and then choose light and choose point. Now we will kind of edit these as we go. Now select the force field and we want to do a couple different things to this. We want a really strong force field. If you put it on a positive number right here on the strength, it pushes things away from it. If you put it on a negative number, it will pull things towards it. We want it to basically repel things like an explosion would. All right, we're going to have this start essentially at 1. But at 1, we're going to have this set to 0. All right? And then you just set that to 0 and then keyframe it by checking that. Or you can hover and press I. And we're going to have this explosion force come in over 3 frames. So I'm going to press the right arrow key twice to break to adjust it to frame three and then I'm going to set this to a uh, 2500 should do all right actually since these are only set to one kilogram I could probably set this to 1000 and then I'm gonna keyframe that that means at frame zero it's uh, basically at zero but at frame two it's going to be at 500 and then frame three it's going to be 1000 it just ramps up very very quickly all right now i want it to stay at that maximum strength for two frames which means i need to go over to frame four and then keyframe that again and then i need it to stay or to ramp down a little bit slower than it ramped in so i'm going to go up to frame 10 and then I'm going to set this to zero. All right. So basically, the force field comes on really fast, stays at the maximum strength for like a, a two or what was it? Two frames, three frames, something like that, and then ramps down over six frames. All right. Now let's change the. Uh, um, influence limitations of this force field we want to set a fall off minimum distance I'm just gonna turn that on but it's set to zero which is fine and max distance the max distance is set you see that little ring that comes out that's the max distance of influence I'm gonna have it set to 3.5 3.5 that means this one, whenever it ramps up to 1000, it's that strength right here in the middle. But as it gets further out to here, it's zero. And then about halfway, it's about 500. I hope that makes sense. Now, I may actually take this right here and uh, set this to 0.25. Because see, that way, it will adjust it just a little bit so that right in here, it's not 500. It's more like 600. I hope that makes sense. All right, now we need to set the point light. Now the point light obviously makes the flash of the explosion. Now I want to go to frame one and I'm going to set this point light color to, let's say, kind of a yellow. Actually, I'm gonna set it to kind of a, a dark orange. All right, and then I'm going to set the stress to zero. Now I'm going to keyframe both of these at frame one. All right, now I'm going to go to, let's say, frame three, and I want this light to be, say, 2500 stress, which is not real, real bright, but kind of bright. And then I'm going to change this color to a little bit more of a yellow kind of a hotter explosive color 
all right now I'm going to keyframe those and then I'm going to go over two frames and I'm going to do the same thing keyframe them again because I wanted to retain that brightness and that color temperature for those frames now I'm gonna have it ramped down so I'm gonna go to 10 frame 10 and of course you can adjust these however you need for your own animation but this is just kind of a guide and here I'm going to go down to 0 and I'm going to just go to a more orange more a darker color as if it's fallen off you know what I mean the flames are dying all right now I'm going to keyframe them once again now if I was to press play right now it should work of course I forgot to make the floor uh, rigid body so I'm going to click on the floor and then go to rigid body change it to passive let's try it one more time okay that's what okay I see what's going on I don't have enough strength in the force field it sort of works but not really all right so let me put this in render view so we can actually see what it looks like I'm gonna take the world light and just turn it down a little bit so that we can see the point light a little bit more see what I mean but one thing for sure the force field has to be stronger so I'm gonna click on the force field all right now I'm going to make sure I'm on the physics tab and I'm just gonna click this button until we get to 1000 now I'm gonna change this to 3000 make it stronger and then don't forget to keyframe it by pressing I or you can also click that and click it again and it re-keyframes it either way and then I'm gonna go to the next frame or the next keyframe down here which is still set to 1000 and I'm gonna change it to 3000 once again you can hover and click I or you can just tap and tap and then it re-keys re it all right now let's try it one more time all right that pretty much worked at that that's probably about the right setting and see the uh, point light doesn't just come on and flash off it ramps up slowly it kind of blinks so that's probably about right but if you have any questions about how to go about doing this because I know I don't explain things very well sometimes drop a co comment below and I will do my best to answer your questions I guess that's it later folks